You mentioned ADHD. You think there's a mitochondrial, there's mitochondrial dysfunction? A hundred percent. And that's causing ADHD? Yeah. Interesting. ADHD has been diagnosed, is being diagnosed in toddlers. That's unconscionable. <laughs> it's unconscionable. <laughs> Let me tell you something else, which you probably know they're putting, they're being put on stimulants because of well, that that's diagnosis. the unconscionable part. That I is. guess, I guess I don't mind the diagnosis because I, I could see a toddler having severe hyperactivity problems. Um, but the first lot, the first round of interventions for that toddler should be working with the parents and family. Let's look at this kid's diet. Let's look at this kid's routines. Let's look at the sleep habits. Let's look at safety. Let's rule out trauma, abuse, adverse childhood experiences happening in this kid's life. And let's address all of those before we resort to pills. Right. Unfortunately, that's not the algorithm. It's common sense, but it's not the medical algorithm. The medical algorithm for the pediatrician is you've got symptoms. I see you running around. Here's a stimulant. Yeah. Next. Yeah. And an interesting study came out or an article came out regarding screen time and ADHD. And it's something it came out recently. So I don't think it would come out but when you wrote the book. But you also mentioned it in your book that screen time predisposes to ADHD. But you said it in the context of could uh, do these kids have a mitochondrial dysfunction that is causing them to rely on the screen. And then that's that, you know, that's just a byproduct of the mitochondrial dysfunction. Pretty much. It could go either way. I think we have enough evidence that screen time is really awful for human health. Um, the more people are on screens, the worse their health, their, the worse their metabolic and mental health outcomes. Mm. There was a really powerful study that just came out in the past six months. I, so I didn't include it in the book that, um, looked at the age of cell phone acquisition for children. Mm -hmm. The younger you, the younger the kid is when he or she gets first cell phone, the more likely they are to develop a mental illness. And it was a linear relationship. No ambiguity in that graph. If you give your nine year old kid a cell phone, much higher risk than 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Linear relationship. The younger the kid is when he or she gets first cell phone, the more likely he or she is to have a mental illness. Incredible. 